Good evening. Welcome and hear another media commentary to the most recent developments in the Ukraine crisis. Yesterday, August 28, 2014, the UN Security Council met in New York and US President Obama telephoned with Germany's Chancellor Merkel. The quick yet no longer surprising result of this in Brussels, the next intense discussions are running about still sharper sanctions against Russia. In leading media the following day, we read, also Angela Merkel supports stronger sanctions against Russia. Is this chancellor really working for Germany? Or is she secretly working for the USA and those pulling the strings behind the scenes? The fact is, Germany is economically quite dependent on Russia, and every sanction against Russia only hurts ourselves while Russia nearly brushes them off with a weary smile. In spite of this, a day later in a special European Union summit meeting, a new suggestion for sanctions against Russia will probably be on the table. And this in a great hurry, while the UN Security Council has to admit that its by now 20th crisis meeting concerning the Ukraine conflict came up with no solutions. U.S. President Obama declared, very goal-oriented, after his talk with Merkel, that there has never been any doubt, and he and Merkel agree, Russia is responsible for the violence in eastern Ukraine. Russia trains, arms, and finances the separatist rebels. Once again, the U.S. government has no doubts. But just a minute, don't we recognize this absolutely certain, no doubt, talk from somewhere else? Ah, right. Weren't there just recently absolutely no doubts that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction? That Iran is building an atomic bomb? That Gaddafi was destroying Libya and all of Africa? And every single time, in retrospect, it was proved that nearly the opposite was the truth. Furthermore, whenever the U.S. government had no doubts, undoubtedly the biggest catastrophes followed. Just recall all of the unjustly bombed, ruined countries of the so-called Arab Spring. Above all, remember the incubator lie, which led to a genocide in Iraq. While a Kuwaiti ambassador to the USA purposefully spread this lie in the mass media through his own little daughter, the U.S. government, using the same words as Obama does today, proclaimed that there was no doubt that the Iraqis committed atrocities on newborns and were in possession of weapons of mass destruction. As long as the incubator lie and the resulting genocide on the people of Iraq has not been avenged by an international war crimes tribunal, nor any of the other attacks by the USA, well camouflaged as humanitarian intervention, then we are better off fostering extreme doubts concerning Obama's constant accusations against Russia. How can the mass media continually keep silent about what has been proven beyond all doubt already early on in the Ukraine crisis? Revealing telephone conversations, for example that of Victoria Nuland, the representative of the U.S. Foreign Ministry and other U.S. string pullers. These absolutely proved without a shadow of a doubt that the USA not only initiated the Ukraine crisis, but also trained, armed and financed its paid terrorists and mercenaries. Yet up until this day, instead of spreading these well-founded, proven facts and issues, the mass media continues to spread solely the ever-new U.S. lies against the Russian government. That is why things go from bad to worse. First, it has been proven the U.S.-steered Ukrainian coup government has been attacking its own people with military force for months. Then they declared those citizens defending themselves to be terrorist separatists and afterwards bombed and shredded them to pieces. And this morning, August 29th, Obama hypocritically and without being penalized could spread in all the media that the USA does not want to react to Russia's aggression with military means, politics and diplomacy must again regain the upper hand over the warmongers. What an incredibly blatant hypocritical strategy. Also Germany's Chancellor emphasized she does not want to give up negotiations. Like this, Obama appears once again to be an apostle for peace. The media-blinded people believe him. Exactly in this way, the mainstream media is moving our still-war reluctant European peoples towards readiness for war with the evil Russian aggressor.
This is the reason why, after vehemently emphasizing that although every diplomatic U.S. effort towards peace has failed, they want to keep trying. And leading media close their reports with the tragic words, this is why today again tanks will be rolling and shooting on the eastern Ukrainian border. Valued viewers, we'll try to summarize the scenario like this for you. The Ukraine once belonged to Russia. Russia and Ukraine are related to each other like neighboring families whose parents are not always united but whose children have married with each other. So whether they want to or not, they are dependent on each other for family peace. U.S. warmongers are like a hostile neighborhood family which steals and harms the related Ukrainian family and then slanders the Russian family by blaming them for this in order to break the two families apart. These slandering neighbors go on so long with their undercover attacks until the children of the two families divide up and begin to hate each other. It is in the nature of the issue that one day the Russian family loses its nerves and, in whatever form, start to fight back. This is exactly the moment the hostile enemies have been waiting for from the start. As soon as the Russian family also arms its children or also drives its tanks out, the hostile neighbors will proclaim this to be the absolute proof for their claims from the very beginning. It is obvious that Russia will eventually do something to protect her children, Ukrainian citizens, in some way or another. If they send their Ukrainian family members indispensable food supplies, as they recently did, the hostile slandering family immediately claims they are delivering weapons instead. But if one day the situation is in such a mess that the Russians actually deliver their children in the Ukraine weapons for self-defense, then the whole previously incited and agitated neighborhood would rise up and attack them. Conclusion. Stop this U.S. warmongering by spreading this news. Send this link. Upload it onto websites and spread information. Like this, you'll help prevent war. Think about all that has been said and consider how you would react in the same situation if you were in Putin's shoes. We wish you a lot of wisdom for this and still a good day.